Hey, today we're going to continue our lesson on citing text evidence that is explicitly stated. That means in a story or passage, that means you can find it directly in the passage or citing text evidence by making inferences in the text. So we're going to read part two of Racing Toward the Goal to refresh your memory. You have Nathaniel who decided that he's going to be a runner. And even though there's no um, track team in his grade level at his school, he's determined to practice running. And he gets a book, buys a book, and reads a book about how to run. And he doesn't give up. So now it is part two. You should have opened your assignment. And you should have your tab at the top that says Racing Toward the Goal, part two. So I'm going to read. You follow along. Before I read, here is the second part of the selection. Read it once to figure out its basic meaning, then read it a second time to pick up extra details and analyze them. So when you analyze something, you break things up into parts and you see how they work. Racing toward a goal, part two. When field day finally arrived, Nathaniel felt confident in his ability. He felt that way until he walked outside and viewed the entire population of the middle school that had congregated on the athletic field. So congregated just means they all gathered there in one spot. As he looked around, the sheer size of the audience intimidated Nathaniel. So when he looks around, he sees the entire middle school out on the football field. He gets nervous. So when you're intimidated, you, you feel unsure of yourself. So he's feeling unsure of himself because of all the people. He pushed that thought aside and jogged over to his gym teacher. Mr. Silverman, who runs first? He inquired. There will be three separate heats, as they call them in the running world. First, the fifth graders will compete against each other. Then, the sixth and seventh graders will do the same. The three finalists will then compete to be the champion. I've been watching you train, Nathaniel, Mr. Silverman told him. You should do very well. I want to stop right here because I want to talk about this paragraph. It has, it has, parent, it has um, quotation marks. And whenever you have someone talking back and forth in a story, that is called dialogue. And the quotation marks indicate what one person is saying. So from the beginning of the sentence all the way to where it ends, Nathaniel, that's Mr. Silverman talking. So these are his words. And then there's another line of dialogue that Mr. Silverman is talking about. So whenever you have two or more characters talking to each other, they use quotation marks and it's called dialogue. Thank you. Nathaniel responded and then told himself not to let the flattery go to his head. He still had two miles to run. The fifth graders lined up on the starting line and the whistle blew. Nathaniel cheered them all on. Afterwards, he congratulated the winner. Nathaniel and the other sixth graders ran next. From his very first stride, Nathaniel felt strong and in control. He won the race by almost a full minute. And although he felt good about his accomplishment, he did not allow himself to relax. Nathaniel then watched the seventh graders run, realizing that his real opponent, opponent was probably in this group. Jackson Bergman had no problem winning the race. Soon, Mr. Silverman announced that the three finalists in the mile run should report to the starting line. Standing next to Jackson, Nathaniel felt butterflies begin to stir in his stomach until he reminded himself, take a deep breath, Relax. Think about your feet, not his. The whistle blew and the runners were off, with Nathaniel immediately taking the lead. His breathing was strong and his legs felt good. He focused on taking long, steady strides. But no sooner had he settled into his fast pace than he sensed another runner by his side. Nathaniel resisted the temptation to turn his head and look. Instead, he forced himself to maintain his focus and continue toward, toward looking forward toward his goal of the finish line. Suddenly, Nathaniel stumbled. 
He regained his balance and hit his stride again in an instant, but Jackson had passed him. Nathaniel had a fleeting thought of failure, but then all the training he had done and the miles he'd run took over. He pulled ahead of Jackson, and 50 yards later, Nathaniel was the first to cross the finish line. After accepting his first place ribbon and pinning on the shirt, Nathaniel turned and shook Jackson's hand. Great race, Nathaniel said, and they both smiled as Jackson returned the compliment. Perspiration glistened on Nathaniel's forehead and his breathing was not yet back to normal, but he had never felt better in his life. So there's a hint for you that when you read stories, pay attention to what the characters think and what the characters think about and what they say. And this gives you important information to help you answer questions. So by comparing these details, you can come to conclusions about characters. For example, if we look at how Nathaniel acted after the race, it shows that Nathaniel's polite and he doesn't complain. Okay, please go to slide four and we're gonna discuss some of the questions together and some of them you're gonna have to do independently. So question one says, what does Nathaniel tell himself to do in order to overcome his nerves about the race? Remember, he's really nervous. So it tells us to look at paragraphs 21 and 22. So I'm gonna go back up and find paragraphs 21 and 22. And so in paragraph 21, it's telling us that there are three finalists and Nathaniel has butterflies. That tells me he's nervous. And then he reminded himself, take a deep breath, relax, think about your feet, not his. So that is what he tells himself to remind him to be calm. So when he's nervous, he tells himself, to relax, breathe, and think about his feet. So I'm not citing text evidence. I'm just taking what I read and putting it in my own words. And I'm writing it in a complete sentence and answer the question. So he tells himself to relax, breathe, and think about his feet, feet in order to overcome his nerves about race. If you need to pause this, just type your answer, please do so, and then resume when you're ready for question two. So now question two says, what can you infer about Jackson Bergman's personality from the text? So they're making you create, come up with an inference, which means they don't tell you what Jackson per Bergman's personality is, but you have to take what you learned from the text and what you know. So this is what I know. Jackson was Nathaniel's biggest competitor. He can run just as fast as, fast as Nathaniel, which tells me if Nathaniel was determined to become a better runner, that means that Jackson had to have been deter just as determined to be a, a good runner. That means he had to practice um, every day and run many miles. So I know, first of all, I'm making an inference that because he kept up with Nathaniel in the race, Nathaniel in the race, he's determined like Nathaniel. But also at the end of the race, after Nathaniel won, Nathaniel congratulated him, Jackson, and said, good race. Now, Jackson could have been a sore loser and said, and walked away, but he didn't. He smiled. And he also congratulated Nathaniel on a good race. So that tells me that he's also polite and a good sport. So you could go back through paragraphs 20 and 24. But so I'm just going to write this. Um, Jackson. Bergman or Bergman. Bergman, sorry, is probably, and I'm hitting probably because I'm making an inference. I don't know for sure. It's probably determined like Nathaniel because he is good at running too. Because he is good at running too. That takes Then in addition, he seems a 
again, I'm not I'm just making an inference. I'm using the word seems. He seems polite. And a good sport because he compliments Nathaniel. So I'm making an inference, and so I'm using the words probably and seems because I'm taking what I learned from the story and what I think and know. I know. If you need to pause this, go ahead so that you can type your answer. Okay, slide five. Question number three. It says, at what point are you sure that Nathaniel has won the race? Reread paragraph 23. Can I go to paragraph 23? It says that he stumbled and Jackson had passed him. And then he pulled ahead of Jackson and 50 yards later, Nathaniel was first to cross the finish line. So this is happening at the very end of the story. So when it's asking me, at what point are you sure that Nathaniel has won the race? I don't know the very end when Daniel pulled ahead of Jackson and is first to cross the finish line. Now, part B, if you need to pause this, go ahead. When you're ready, resume it. Part B says, what evidence from the text supports your answer, part A? Now, I'm not going to tell you this one. I'm going to force you to go back to paragraph 23. And it says, what evidence from the text? I'm going to start the quotation part. You have to cite word for word one or two sentences. It could be one sentence. It might be two sentences that tells you that he won the race, that he it was at the very end when he won the race. So you are citing text evidence. So when I look at this, it has to start with quotation marks. You're copying word for word the evidence, and then you're ending the sentence with another quotation mark. Pause this, and when you're finished answering your question, you can go on to the last slide, number six. And I'm actually not helping you with number six. It's going to be independent practice. I'm going to read the question and the hint, but then you're going to do this yourself, and then you're going to submit. What is an inference the reader can make about Nathaniel from reading the text? So remember, an inference is an educated guess based on what you read. To answer this question, think about how Nathaniel responds to pressure, to the pressure of the race, the pressure of him stumbling during the race, the pressure of seeing all of the middle school on the football field. So whatever answer you think, you want to take this little circle and drag it over either A, B, C, or D. And then part B, what quote from the selection supports your answer to part B? Look at this, what this says, choose two answers. And I just realized that I did not put enough circles for you to drag over. So what I want you to do is put one circle over it and then down here in the speaker notes, I want you to type the other choice. So in the speaker notes, you're gonna either type Whatever you didn't put a circle around, either A, B, C, D, E, or F, because it's asking for two choices. Or you can grab the T, the text box, and you can hide, draw a box around the other answer. That would be the easiest way. Don't forget to click, go back to the tab that has the blue check mark, and click Submit.